this skin discoloration can and does absolutely occur with colloidal silver as well as other forms. This is the True Health Report, where critical appraisal fuels true freedom. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the True Health Report. I'm your host, Dr. Andrew Kaufman. Now, this video, which will be rather brief, is a response to my colloidal silver video, which had many, many comments, some of which were very heated, and I want to respond to some of those. But first, let me give a YouTube disclaimer. So this information is for the YouTube sensors, uh, whether they be AI or human. In this video, I am not promoting any controversial health products. In fact, I'm going to talk about the risks and side effects only of colloidal silver. So please do not censor this video like the four other videos you took down in the last month. Okay, now let me get on with the presentation since I've gotten that out of the way. So this is the comment that I want to respond to in this video, and I will make a couple of other response videos about other issues. But this is from Rob Ban Pal 2887 and I'll read it. Wow. Here you lost a lifelong supporter, Andy. You're completely wrong about colloidal silver. What you talk about is silver nitrate or silver salt. You cannot get argyria from colloidal hyphen ion silver. The particles are too small. Sad to see this. That's the first ignorant post I've ever seen you post. So very strong words about this. And let me remind the viewers that Argyria is the name for the grayish bluish skin discoloration that can occur with ingestion or even topical application of silver containing products. Now, just to tell you a couple of things about this, there are no individual risk factors that are known. So in other words, in advance, you can't predict who will have this issue. And there's also no clear threshold dose or length of exposure that is required. And mostly what we have are case reports. But in my original video, if you go to my blog page, I always have the references linked and the full transcript of my presentation. And this is the review paper, which I presented from about the Argyria issue. And it reviews quite a number of studies. It has nearly 200 references. And I just want to show you, this is a table from that paper, which shows here that silver containing colloids and in two different examples here have been linked in the literature to causing Argyria. Now, there is a lot more to this because there are numerous references related to this. So clearly there have been reports of Argyria occurring in response to colloidal silver, but let us not stop at simply one review paper, but let's go into a few articles. Now, most of these references are case reports, but there are quite a number of case reports. And this is one from a dermatology surgery journal because they're talking about using a laser treatment on the skin to reverse the discoloration and pigmentation of the skin. Now, in this particular case, the patient had only used colloidal silver for a two-week period, and more specific information was not available, but that's a very brief exposure to cause this problem. Now, if we go to the literature, and this is from a PubMed page for the article on the top entitled Three Systemic Argyria Cases After Ingestion of Colloidal Silver Solution, you can see that under the similar articles, there are four other case reports about Argyria after colloidal silver ingestion. And those are even in addition to the papers that I'm presenting in this brief video. Now, here is that actual paper about three systemic cases. And I included a table which gives some information about each case. And we can see that these were all relatively high doses and they 
all were prolonged exposures from 18 months to three years, but it's unclear exactly when in that course these problems developed. But let me remind you that there is no standardized dosing or preparation for this product other than using electrolysis with elemental silver. So it's very, very difficult to tell how to compare these doses exactly to the dose that you or people you know may be using. Now, here is another case report of Argyria occurring in a patient who went for a colonoscopy. Now, this is a case I wanted to include because the patient in this case did not swallow the colloidal silver, but they used it as nasal drops for a period of 15 years and then developed this skin discoloration issue. So, I know there are a lot of folks who believe that colloidal silver is a well-tolerated, low-risk material, and there have been many comments besides the one that I'm specifically addressing here, which have stated that Argyria doesn't occur in colloidal silver, only in silver nitrate or silver salts, and that is simply not what is in evidence in terms of the medical literature. While it can occur with those other types of silver formulations, it clearly can also occur with colloidal silver. So it is incumbent upon you all to check the references yourself and not simply make unfounded claims because it's your personal preference or you like this or it's going to ruin your expectations about this particular substance. When I began doing the research for this presentation, I really had no opinion about colloidal silver. I had heard from a lot of people that it was helpful. I had heard that it was mainly an antibacterial or antimicrobial type of preparation, but I really hadn't researched it sincerely. But once I did, all the evidence really pointed that not only is there a risk of Argyria, which may not affect your overall health or longevity, but clearly is a serious cosmetic issue. But there are other forms of toxicity, which I outlined in the main presentation. So please do review these papers yourself and see that the information is available, that this skin discoloration can and does absolutely occur with colloidal silver as well as other forms. I definitely appreciate all of the engagement with comments and the discussion. And especially if you challenge me to do further research, I will find the answer. And if I made a mistake, I will do my best to correct that as quickly as possible. But as you can see in this case, I was simply reporting what I found in the literature. And while it may be difficult to accept, it is the reality. I look forward to seeing you for the next True Health Report.